dear fellow students, today's topic for our presentation today is enzymes. So without further ado, let's get started. Enzymes. Enzyme is a protein that acts as a biological catalyst. That is, it speeds up the metabolic reactions without itself being permanently changed. The substance present at the start of an enzyme catalyzed reactions is called the substrate. The product is a new substance form. Enzymes are globular proteins. That is an area part of a molecule called the active sites where the substrate molecule can bind, which produces an enzyme substrate molecule. The 3D shapes of the active site fits the substrate perfectly, and only one side type of substrate can bind the enzyme. The R groups of the amino acids at the active site able to form temporary bonds with substrate molecule, and this pulls the substrate molecule slightly out of the shape, causing it to react and form product. In terms of the activation energy, in order to change into products, substrate need to supply with energy. This is called activation energy. In laboratory, energy is supplied by heating to cause two substances to react together. Enzymes able to make substances react even at low temperatures by reducing activation energy in order to make the reaction take place by restoring the shape of substrate molecule that it binds at the enzyme active sites. Factors that are affecting the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction. First, we look at the temperature. At low temperature, enzyme and substrate molecule have little kinetic energy. They infrequently collide and move slowly. Rate of reactions is also slow. But if the temperature increases, then kinetic energy of molecules also increases. Collision frequency increases and the rate of reactions also increases. Above certain temperature, hydrogen bonds holding the enzyme molecule in shape begin to break which causes territory structure of enzyme to change. This effect is called denaturation. It becomes less likely the substrate molecule will be able to bind with the enzyme and the rate of reactions slow down. The temperature at which an enzyme works most rapidly just below at which denaturation begin is called optimum temperature. So enzyme in the human body generally have the optimum temperature of about 37 Celsius. Enzyme from an organism has, that have evolved to live in much higher or lower temperatures may have higher or lower optimal temperature. This is the graph which shows the rate of reactions and the temperature. As you can see, as the temperature arises, the extra energy in the reactants result in faster rate of reaction, and the rate is approximately double for a 10 degree rise. And at this point, you can see that as the enzyme optimum temperature, the rate of reaction is also maximum. And as the temperature rise above optimum, the enzyme is increasingly denatured or deactivated. As you can see, this is going up, 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 up until optimum level, and the rate reaction is become maximum. And then, as the temperature rises above the optimum, and the enzyme is increasing and the nature of the activity. The second factors will be pH. pH affect ionic bond that for protein molecule shape. Enzymes are protein that can be easily affected by the changes in pH. Most enzyme molecules only contain 
or maintain the characteristic structure within a very narrow pH range around pH 7. An example is when the protein digesting enzyme pepsin is found in human stomach, which has an optimum pH of 2. And this is how the graph looks like when the rate of reactions versus optimum pH. So at pH value, at this point, either sides of the optimum, the bond holding the enzyme territory shape, including that of the active site, are disrupted. And if the shape of the active site is changed, the enzyme loses some of its activity. So once it's pushed up, at a certain level, it will go down. And at extreme pH, the enzyme is denatured and deactivated. And then the third factor is enzyme concentration. The greater the concentration of enzyme, the more frequent the collisions between enzyme and substrate, hence faster rate of reaction. If you see, the rate is increasing. And at a very high enzyme concentration, the concentration of soot, the enzyme concentration is increased. Extract may become a limited factor, so rate does not continue to increase. When there are more substrate molecules than enzyme molecules, running the experiment again with more enzyme produces a high rate of reaction, and the rate of reaction is in proportion to the concentration of enzyme use. When there are more enzyme molecules than substrate, molecules running the experiment again with more enzyme does not result in a higher rate of reaction as there are no space substrate molecule for the enzyme. And the four factors that are affecting the rate of enzyme is a substrate concentration. The greater the concentration of substrate, the more frequent the collisions between enzyme and substrate, hence faster rate of reaction. At the very high substrate concentration, the concentration of enzyme concentration may become a limiting factor, so rate does not continue to increase if the substrate concentration is increased. So you can see at this high peak rate of reaction, and the substrate concentration is also very high. So when there is a high concentration of substrate, molecule, each enzyme molecule is working as fast as it can. Repeating the experiment with more substrate does not result in a higher rate of reaction as the enzyme molecule cannot bind substrate and change it to product or any faster. Inhibitors. There are two types, competitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors. You can see that competitive inhibitor is have similar shape to enzyme normal substrate and can fit into the enzyme epicyte. You can see Substrate is entering the epicyte of enzyme and they can fit. Can fit into the enzyme epicyte. This is the epicyte. It can fit. You can see from the diagram, enzyme changes shape slightly as a substrate bind. So the greater proportion of inhibitor to substrate, the more likely it is that the inhibitor molecule cannot substrate molecule will bind into an epicyte. And the degree to which the competitive inhibitors slow down, the reaction is affected by relative concentration of the inhibitor and the substrate. And in the end, it will produce the product. And this is the graph shows that when the product giving the active site of the enzyme, this is a, uh, the competitive inhibitor is similar to the normal substrate. This is enzyme active on its normal substrate. For the non-competitive inhibitor, they do not have the same shape as substrate. You can see inhibitor bind to an illustrate site of an enzyme, which is substrate complex, which causes inactivation. This is inhibitor. And the size is not, the substrate is not equivalent to the uh, active sites. So they do not bind the active site. They bind to a different part of the enzyme. This 
change the enzyme shape, including the shape of the active site, so the substrate can no longer bind with it. Even if we add more substrate, it still won't be able to bind, so the degree to which a non-competitive inhibitor slow a reaction and is not affected by the concentration of the inhibitor and substrate. If you let's see, at the normal binding, the substrate bind to the active site of the enzyme, as per we see in the previous diagram. The substrate anchoring the active sites on the enzyme. This is considered, and this you can see, the situation is become active. This is a normal binding. But during the competitive, inhib competitive inhibitor, inhibitor mimics substrate and competes for the epicytes. So it becomes when they compete, okay, to enter the active site, so it becomes the competitive inhibitor, once it's it be able to enter the active site, and this situation is already become inactive. And this is a non-competitive inhibitor, which I already explained just now, the situation at last, it somehow they bind to a different part of the enzyme. Okay, they try to bind in a different part of the enzyme, and this shape of the enzyme also on the active side can no longer bind with it. They cannot bind to a different part of the enzyme. And at the end of the day, so this is a situation that will become inactive. And also goes to for the scenario for the uncompetitive inhibitor. That's all for today's presentation. I hope that you are very clear with the subject matter. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to John Sabila YouTube channel. There will be more notes, more presentations on the subsequent topic. That's all for today. Thank you very much for listening.